Welcome to part two of lecture 19 of aerospace propulsion. So we left off with this question of what the four constraints are that we have, can impose to relate quantities in our engine. Here are the four constraints. One, the rotational speed of the compressor and the turbine must be equal on each shaft. Two, the mass flow through the compressor and the turbine must be equal if we neglect any bleeds or fuel flow. The power output of the turbine must be equal to the power input of the compressor on the same shaft and the pressure rise in the overall compression process, so the intake plus the compressor, must be equal to the pressure drop in all of the expansion processes in the combustor, turbines, and propulsive nozzle. When you see these written down, they all seem like fairly obvious statements, but if you don't sort of think of these ahead of time, you may find yourself stuck when trying to figure out how the engine behaves off design. We can treat turbines in a simplified manner that's going to make our problem solving approach a lot more uh, practical. Matching all four of those constraints listed previously generally requires some iteration, but if we treat our turbine as a choked nozzle based on its inlet conditions, then the non-dimensional mass flow is a constant, um, which is 1.389 for our, our gamma and our turbine of 1.3. Um, and if we also treat the polytropic efficiency of the turbine as a constant, then it's easy to get the temperature ratio, temperature drop in the specific work. Uh, the temperature ratio is related to the pressure ratio via the polytropic efficiency. The temperature drop is related to the temperature ratio in the inlet temperature. And the specific work is, of course, just CP um, in the turbine times the stagnation temperature change. Now moving downstream to the nozzle, the nozzle may or may not be choked. The relevant area, um, if we're dealing with a converging-diverging nozzle, is the throat um, or the exit for a converging nozzle, such as the ones we've considered so far. Um, if we've got a turbofan engine, then the bypass right is choked for P9 N over P of more than 1.893, whereas the core gets choked for the lower value of 1.832 because of the reduced gamma. And if P9 N over P is not high enough to choke the nozzle, um, then we can get the non-dimensional mass flow uh, through the nozzle based on the expression we developed earlier in the course uh, for the non-dimensional mass flow in terms of pressure ratios. Because if the nozzle is not choked, the exit pressure is the atmospheric pressure. All right. It's easiest to introduce this off-design um, matching approach using an example. So we're going to use example of a single shaft turbojet engine to notionally look at this. So we'll basically look at matching off design for the Rolls-Royce Viper engine. This is a turbojet engine from the 1950s, a single shaft turbojet, basically the simplest engine you can have. Um, later we'll look at more complex configurations in the subsequent lectures. The turbine's effectively choked for most flight conditions of interest um, and most of the time so is the propulsive nozzle. This is really as simple as an engine can get. There's eight compressor stages. We'll assume the 90% polytropic efficiency. Early versions of this engine had a single turbine stage, and we can use that here. We'll assume an 85% polytropic efficiency for the turbine. And the design point parameters um, for uh, stationary uh, operation at sea level, um, basically uh, where T02 is TA is uh, standard atmospheric temperature, and the P02 is PA is standard atmospheric pressure, um, we get about 15 kilonewtons of gross thrust, um, specific fuel consumption of almost one kilogram per hour per kilogram. Um, the air mass flow rate is about 24 kilograms a second with about uh, 0.4 kilograms a second fuel flow and the overall stagnation pressure ratio is five and a half. The jet velocity based on uh, this is 637 meters a second. So you can see this is an engine that's uh, suited to uh, aircraft that fly quickly. For our combustor chamber modeling approach, we have to use our energy balance as was introduced in chapter 11. Um, and the reason we have to do it this way is because the CP is different for the exhaust gases than it is for um, the air coming in. So we have to sort of go back to our reference temperature um, and the LCV is relative to that reference temperature too. Um, so this is sort of why we have to write this out in this way. You can't just do CP times P0 4 minus P0 3 because the CPs aren't the same.
we'll neglect any pressure drop in the combustor in our model in here, though it wouldn't be that difficult to include it. So now we want to sort of figure out the engine pressure balances. So how can we relate the pressure rise in the intake and the compressor, um, as, uh, as well as the pressure drop in the turbine and nozzle? So we just sort of want to write out what each of these are. Just take a minute and do this for yourself before you move on to the next part of the video, and we'll also take this up in the tutorial.